Seven nights at Hallis, what it is, what it do. Since Bobby Yingham, Curtis Ennis, know that we've been loyal even when we wasn't winning. A trusted source for the news. Back. People, we are here. Day three. In I'm exhausted. Day. I'm tired. The city of Satan's anus. You people need deliverance. <laughs> you ain't even seen the hell of Vegas to say that. that ex exactly. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good point. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't had a full Vegas All experience, he's seen and it's enough. Is drunk people in the fucking hotel lobby, and he said this. He hasn't seen the demon shit that is out here. He hasn't been offered stuff by sex workers on the fucking street in broad fucking daylight. So he hasn't seen the shit. But anyway, we're here. That was a hell of an intro. Vegas. You know, I told Scott the, uh, yesterday. I'm tired of the professional shit. I'm tired of me sounding like, oh, you know, I don't like myself. Like, 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 uh, like Andre uh, Alrich from NBA TV. <laughs> I'm tired of it, bro. You're going to get the real me. And you know what, bro? Let's, get to, let's close that a bit. This is a normal, what people normally do during a podcast, but I don't give a shit. So I'm anyway. tired of taking shit so damn seriously. Sorry. What? Okay, I guess. Anyway, we're here to give y'all part three, final part of the three day. Uh, draft series. By the way, we want to thank each and every one of y'all who donated money to this fund. We got over two thousand dollars, which was more than I thought it was going to be, and we got through this the three, these three days. So definitely yeah. shout y'all. Um, you know, I apologize for the pregame show yesterday. Had a little bit of technical difficulties. This nigga didn't know what he and, was doing. And the nigga was hungry. I kind of let him. I, I kind of left him out to dry. Yeah, ain't no kinda. <laughs> Because he was kind of like, Dude, ooh, 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 ooh. I wasn't prepared fully, and I was, and on top of that, I was fucking hungry, bro. Like y'all don't understand. Well, Scott's hungry. It's I, I can't think. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm with, the NFL. First of all, the NFL funny as hell giving us subway for three fucking days. Number one. We, me and Scott, have talked about teams and their subpar. Catering. Yeah, we do craft. We give we do craft uh, services rankings. But I mean, my thing is, is that. Hosting the media should cost you jack shit. You know, it's not like you have to pay for their seats because these are your buildings. You're going to have those seats anyway. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? At the most, you might have to take some time researching who they are, but it shouldn't cost you much. So spending money on food should be the bare minimum. Um, the I know NFL is sponsored by Subway, yes. right? So I understand the Subway sandwiches. And I didn't mind the pepperoni Subway sandwich yesterday. But it's like, come on, bro. I will say, the, the evening dinner food was good. The dinner was good. Dinner was good. Nice was salad, bad. nice grilled chicken. The Clippers still lead the league in craft services. Shout out to the Clippers organization. Anyway, y'all not here to hear about our craft service rankings. Y'all here to talk about the Chicago Bears. The Bears had a pretty eventful day one, having a pretty eventful day two. We've already had a couple trades. You can pull up how many trades. Ryan Poles made two trades today. The Bears came in here with, what, three picks today? And now they have seven. Yeah, they entered with just um, two-fifths and one-sixth. Yeah. And now they are sitting at uh, fifth round. They have 166. Um, we're recording this live as round three. Me and Scott didn't want to go back up to the media room for, for day three. Uh, main reason is because we have to catch a flight. Yeah, we got to catch And so it kind of doesn't coincide with what we have to do. I've got to get back to the City Angels. he got to get back to Winterfell. I, 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 honestly, I'm ready for cold air. This is why I realize I'm not Okay, a, but it's hot as fuck out here, though. It's not like... That's it's, true. It's, it's, 90, like, it's a high of 73 in L.A. today. That's, that's perfect. That's perfect, perfect weather. Right there. This is too goddamn hot. But uh, uh, the Bears now are looking at the fifth round pick, 166, 168. Sixth round, they're looking at 186, 203, and 207. Seventh round, which they did not have a seventh round pick coming into this game, uh, coming into this draft, is 254 and 255. So, I mean, from... Three picks to end up with seven is uh, impressive by every single means. That's that's a really good thing. My only issue was, you know, there was Shakir, the wide receiver out of, was it Boise State? Yeah, he went to Buffalo. I, you know, Buffalo knows how to utilize wide receivers, so I'm sure they'll utilize them well either in returning special teams or uh, uh, with a receiver group they have. You know, I think they have a pretty good receiver group. <clears throat> so that annoyed me a little, but I also know that Ryan Poles – and his team, they have an analytics team, and they're very analytic. And I, you know, when it first happened, I was like, "Oh man, we the Bears need an analytics thing." Now I'm like, "Well, sometimes you just got to go with the with with what's there." But whatever, that's me ranting. So let's do, so three picks the Bears made yesterday. Uh, Kyler Gordon went from Washington. Mm -hmm, Jaquan uh, Brisker. Jaquan Brisker went to Penn State. 
And, uh, Velas Jones Jr. Velas Jones Jr. who went to Tennessee. Now, you have a more level-headed approach on this. I have a more level-headed. I was pretty emotional yesterday. Mm-hmm. Took me out of the whole draft, to be completely honest. I had to take a fucking walk mm-hmm. after the after the, the, after the, <coughs> um, the second pick because mm-hmm. I just didn't understand why you didn't get a fucking receiver. Yeah. And so I literally had to leave the draft room for about 20 minutes to get my head clear. But what's your overall opinion on what polls did there and what do you think about the fan reaction, whether good or bad? Fan reaction because we – Asked for grades um, amongst uh, every Bears fans, and we had thousands of engagements for that single tweet, just asking what they felt. Initially, it was about C's, maybe two D's, a couple F's. Then the B's started flowing in. All the B's, B plus, B minus. Toward the end, we saw A, A plus, and I'm like, I think y'all drink, drinking the Kool Aid to say that. If you, because I think for those who like the two defensive picks, with their, fr- you know, Kyler Gordon and uh, Jaquan Brisker are two very good uh, defensive players. I don't think you would like the offensive pick. Whereas me, I'm a little bit different in how I feel. I think Kyler Gordon is an immediate day one starter, and I think Jaquan Brisker is an immediate day one starter. These are all people who are all immediately going to bolster the 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 defensive secondary. I immediately think the Bears secondary becomes one of the best in the leagues if these play if these two players play to their potential. Jaquan Brisker is like a six one stud. He's very athletic, very fast. Hard hitter. He's going to go well next to Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson may have a chance to be a ball hawk again. Kyler Gordon has a lockdown skills just in the same way Jalen Johnson has a lockdown skill. That's great. Jalen been looking for a running mate for a minute. Yeah, that's great. Jalen Johnson is a very – you've seen Jalen Johnson going against the best. Yeah. And Jalen Johnson Jalen Johnson has continually held his own. Jalen regards Devontae, which we don't have to worry about anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but even still, I mean, he yeah. held his own with Devontae, but yeah. Devontae is the best in the league, which you expect. Devontae had – Oh, now he's the best in the league. So we can't. Excuse me. Is he on the Packers? No, I mean, I mean, I've been saying it for years. But he's not on the Packers, right? No, he's not. Exactly. Okay. So now he's the best in the league, according to me. I just want to say the Vikings are some bitches, by the way, for helping the Packers. That's that shit we can say. What happened to fuck your division rival? Nobody does that. Like, what are we doing? If the, if college had a draft, which would never happen, do you think that Bama would trade with Auburn? As a matter of fact, we got our quarterback because of division hate between the Eagles and the Cowboys. I mean, not the Giants and the Cowboys. <laughs> That's how we got our The Giants gave the Bears yeah, the they're, like, they're like, fuck them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's not like, it was the was the Giants the Eagles or was the Giants and? Nah, it was the Giants. We got the Giants pick, but I guess like the they were trying to, the uh, the Cowboys trying to trade up to get. That pick. Yeah, to get somebody, not Justin, but somebody Of course, somebody else. to get that pick and they're like, yeah, fuck it. We like, get, fuck up. That's uh, what you do. My favorite division spike is when Doug Peterson tanked. So the Giants couldn't make the playoffs two years ago. That was did he hilarious. laugh in yeah, the game? They, they were laughing on the sideline. That's so fucking hilarious. I, I love it. That's that's what happened at the so the Vikings were bitches for that hit. That, that's that's weak. No, no friends. We don't need friendships in the in this game, brother. To the Packers of all people, that's what we supposed to be agreeing with. That we all hate we Packers. supposed to be black brothers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, continue with your with your thoughts. But uh, but yeah, that that was weak. But overall, so here here is here is my point. Here is my. Not lack of understanding, but here's my issue with it. My main issue with it is these are two good defensive players, but how often have the Bears had good defenses? Like, what the fuck? How long has how that has happened? It's, it, for me, it's like, and I don't want to cut you off. No, man. no, go ahead, because I'm, I'm about to literally bring up sportsreference.com okay. just to look at the Bears' record by year and just say, well, look at who was, the, who, who was on this defense. So I just want to let y'all last night. You know, the funny thing is me and Scott are our two-man crew. I, I, I was watching uh, the homies. At uh, uh, Chicago Sports, CHGO Sports. Shout out to CHGO. CHGO uh, uh, Sports. Uh, I really rock with Nick, Will, Mason. You all, you know, you are my guys from Shout Chicago. Shout out to uh, Big Dave, everybody over there. You know, Shout out to uh, uh, Adam Hope. Yeah. But I was looking, I said, man, I really can't wait for the day Barber's Chair has people to work uh, and help us do this digitally. Because this is me and all Scott. Two days. Really, honestly, Barber's Chair Network is a four-man show. It's a four-man show. It's me, him, Pierce, and Dante. Four-man show. Yeah. It's tough. It's yeah. tough. Of course, people who contribute. But the day-to-day, it's a four-man show. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah, now go ahead. Sorry. So, basically, I slept, by the way, I was going to say, our hotel room that we're in right now was our draft war room last night. We were sitting up here looking at film <laughs> all goddamn night. About I wanted to sleep. Cause originally, we were going to record last night, and it was just too loud in this apart, in this outside. I don't know if anybody's seen King Queens, but the episode of King Queens where Doug was on vacation for spring, but they, they, they booked it for spring bait, and it was... Fucking loud kids outside. This one was like out here, and I want to sleep on my thoughts. Let's be very clear. Kyler Gordon and what's my man's first name? 
Oh, Jaquan Brisker. Jaquan Brisker are great. I love Jaquan Brisker more than Kyler Gordon. I probably do too. That dude, if we've been looking for a strong safety who can hit. You know, we're, I'm not the biggest fan of PFF Amos. PFF Ronnie Lott, as you like to call him. He's having a good career. He can hit motherfuckers. He's having a good career. You know what I'm saying? I, we can't stop on him. You know what my original problem with him was? We traded him for Brandon Marshall. That's what I got off the wrong fool with Ryan Pace. I, that's, what, that's, the, that's the issue I had. His pick ended up being Brandon, ended up being Adrian Amos. The Brandon Marshall deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but anyway, we needed somebody because somebody uh, said, I think it was Adam Hogue on his him, the Hogan John podcast I was watching this morning. I think one of the reasons that hasn't, why Eddie hasn't, Bojack hasn't been the same since 2018, he hasn't had a running mate. Like when he had Amos out there, it was easy for him to just be a ball hawk. Yeah. He's been out here with Ha Ha, didn't work out. No. Uh, Taquan Gibson couldn't stay fucking healthy. You know what I'm saying? Deshaun that, Gibson. Deshaun Gibson. That that could that he couldn't stay healthy to help him out with that. So now he's got him, and I think these are two that, uh, young, uh, week one starters. Yes. It's gonna be like uh, Jalen. Jalen was was the opening corner week one two years ago. Yeah. So it's gonna be like that. I think they're gonna be good in Flus's defense, and also secondary was a was was a huge 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 gap last year. Like, bro, it was Jalen and some weak ass motherfuckers. Remember, Bojack missed a good portion of the season. It was a bad bar, so you you feel that. My issue here is not the players we took. It is the process. I don't care. The process over results for me sometimes. You need a wide receiver, right? Mm -hmm. You need weapons for Justin Fields. Everything is about Justin Fields. And George Pickens was right there. Even if it wasn't George Pickens, uh, Pierce was there. There was different options for you to get. That, that guy there, and you could have got let. That was the problem I had with it. I'm still upset about it because I believe on paper, now things can change. There's going to be a second wave of free agency. There's a lot of veteran wide receivers out there. The, my point with with the veteran wide receivers, you got your Jarvis Landry's or your Odell's or your Julio's and things like that, but how many of them are going to sign with the Bears who are clearly not going to be a good football team next year over a contender? So that's to me is a problem. Even Odell, he's going to be out to probably Thanksgiving. That's true. So that's another reason. That's why, on paper, the Bears have a bottom three wide receiver class as of right now. Uh, with Darnell Mooney, with Byron Pringle, with, uh, how you pronounce folks' Equiminius. Name? Equiminius. St. Brown. St. Brown. And also Equiminius, nigga. Equiminius. That's a big-ass name. And then also uh, Velvet Jones. I don't want to fuck his name up. Right, you Bellis know? Jones Jr. Bellis Jones Jr. So, and that's God forbid that Darnell Mooney don't get hurt. And then you add your your your, your tight end of Cole Komet, and of course your running back David Montgomery. And I think we're gonna get a lot of David Montgomery this year. My thing is this: like I just don't see how. To me, you're you're gonna you're trying to make Justin turn water into wine. And I see a lot of people sweeting. Well, you were, we were you expecting the Bears to be good next year? No, I expect the Bears to be trash next year. But this is about Justin Fields' development and wide receivers count, weapons count. Now maybe. Ryan Poe says we believe more in the offensive coordinator and our system and the system that we had here when Matt Nagy was so bad more than the weapons are, mm-hmm. which could be true. Yeah. And and the one thing I did like the Poe said in his, in his in his press conference after the draft was that him and Justin speak a lot. Him and Justin were watching film about what receivers to potentially bring in. So obviously there wasn't any guys who Justin was like, I want him. Because mm-hmm. if that was the case, he would have got him. That's true. So that's something that stood out to me too. So, But at the end of the day, that's just how I feel. I would give him a C-, minus yeah. just because that I don't know. I, I just I just didn't like the way it went about it. I think you got two good guys. I just didn't like the way it, they went about it. Now, they got a lot of picks today. You can get them. Now, you don't really know in these type of rounds, some of these dudes might not be in the league this year. Some of them might be great. You might have you a diamond rough. We don't really know. With the draft in general, we don't really know. We really got to wait and see. So that's where I'm at right right now. I'm going to take a wait and see approach. I'm not happy about it. I'm not going to sit and act like I'm happy about it. But it is what it is at this point. So while Scott was talking, I was looking on Stat Muse just so I could just get a nice encyclopedia look at the top defenses by year. We might actually be get the live pick while we're recording. I'm assuming we will. Yeah. Uh, but I was looking at the, whatchamacallit, the... Uh, top defenses by year, and one thing I will say for sure. So yeah, the Bears pick at one sixty six and three picks later. This is we're, while we're recording this, the fifth round is going on, and we're at one sixty three. Uh, but the top defenses by year, you know who dominated the two thousands? The Bears and the Ravens. Yeah, Bears and Ravens. Yeah. So and then of course once Lovey came in, and who got who, championship in two thousand? Well, Ravens did. But who dominated the the late two thousands? Same thing. Is the Bears also had top ten defenses? Yeah. 
And I don't. The nineties were just a dark year. Period. Nineties um, might be the worst period in baseball. Yeah, nineties are just a dark year. It's period. I was also a child, so you know, my Bears memories don't really start until two thousand one. My first Bears memory that I can remember was the Walter, the game after Walter Payton died. Ninety nine or the ninety eight. Ninety nine when the, the kick got blocked, and it was like. Sweetness blocked that from heaven. Remember that? Yeah. That was that was that was my first Bears memory. That's my first Bears memory. My I, first Bears playoff memory, of course, when Don McNabb came to beat the so shit out of them. Practice up real quick. <laughs> the shit out of them. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking at this. I'm going from 2000 to 2004 to 2006, 2007, 2010, and we're looking at just insane defenses. Top ten, top five. Some of them number one for three, four years straight. Number one defenses by the Bears. When you get into the Tresman era, that's where you lose the defense. The defense started being dog shit. John Fox in his second year was producing a better defense, but they were still dog shit on offense. Of course, when you look at Matt Nagy those first two years, they had with the top. They were, they were DVOA were number one for two years. Yeah. Uh, the last two years, obviously, everything slipped. But if you take those last 20 years, that's nothing but good defenses. So why am I? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, 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 2000, it's 2022, bro. I don't give a shit about defense like that. Yeah. And I say that because the rules are geared for offense. The rules are like, I, I feel sorry for cornerbacks sometimes because I'm like, bro, what are you supposed to do when you're in the end zone or not the end zone, when you are guarding the uh, the hash marks? And so you know when this slot receiver is coming up, the slot receiver is coming up, he's not, you don't know if he's going to uh, stutter step and go for in route. He might just look and come for a straight drag rock, get the ball quick, and you can't even grab on to his shirt, just briefly. Briefly, of course you're going to slow him down. That's what you're trying to do. You're, try, you're trying to get yourself in stride with him because it's hard to react to the way people run because it's unexpected. And as much as you love to look at the sets, the screens, I mean the sets, but the, the game film to say, okay, when this happens, this is what this player does. When this happens, this is what this player does. The reality is it's still – it's such uh, – cornerbacks, defensive backs, periods, I do not envy with how long it takes them – to, I don't don't envy their position. I don't, don't I don't I don't envy pass for position because you can't touch fucking quarterback. That's what I'm saying. So right now defenses everything's against them. You can't lay with your body weight on a defender like that's just natural when you jump for a, a sack. With that being said, in today's game, you need offense. Everything is geared toward the offense. The Chiefs won. Uh, uh, the Super Bowl a couple years ago with a fantastic offense, a so-so defense that was starting to get turnovers as the game went around late. So going for ball hawks is fine. But my thing is is that... Uh, if you have a top 10 offense and a middle row defense, you can win the Super Bowl. Exactly. You have a top t- a top defense middle row offense, you're not you're winning. You're not winning shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I think that's the point that everybody needs to... to Realize, but once people say Chicago's a defensive town, <clears throat> you meathead ass Bears fans are included in that. <clears throat> I can't, first of all, people said, oh, you know, you were whining in your mentions. Guess what? I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm literally sitting here at the draft, literally, what's the word? Uh, what is the processing? Processing the picks that the Bears have. We're not, we're independent media. I can do what the hell I want. And so I'm just sitting here trying to. Gauge my feelings as a journalist who covers the Bears, but also as a Bears fan. A lot of people who cover the Bears aren't Bears fans, but I know a good number of them are as Bears fans. But some of them become jaded. I don't want to become so jaded that I can't actually voice my opinion. And I didn't like it. Vellis Jones, however, I did like to pick. Vellis Jones, I did like to pick. And and this isn't just something he's saying right now. He no. said it when he drank. He's all like it. No, I, I say that immediately. Yeah. The only reason I say that is because there's a, a, a front homeboy through Twitter who is a big uh, Tennessee fan who has mentioned him several times. And I took note, you know, especially during the season because Tennessee is a waste man, wasteland when it comes to getting good offensive players, getting good offense, period, because they never really have had great offenses. What? Great offensive like a, a quarterback since who? Peyton Manning? And so, I, if I look up the uh, the Tennessee players who were drafted quarterback, it's going to be a, sm- a short list. So, I, I overall, I have to give it a C minus. Nothing did here stood out to me. Yeah, you're going to be able to rebuild that defense, but I think offense should always be the priority. Um, Ryan Post said in his press conference that yeah, you don't build a rebuild a team over in over one draft. That's true. That's why the first thing you should do was focus on wide receiver. Right, exactly. This year's draft was a wide receiver heavy right, draft. Yeah. Go get you a go get you a wide receiver immediately. Go get you someone who can be side to side by Darnell Mooney. I wholly believe Darnell Mooney is a good number two. Yeah. But that's all I believe. Yeah, I do not think he's a number one unless unless something happens this year yeah. where he makes an insane leap. 
from his first to second year, he made a pretty solid jump. Not a leap, but a jump. He made a nice jump. You know, from someone who was coming from around what? And he's been pretty durable so far. He hasn't really gotten hurt. Even though he's been taking some tough tackles. Um, What I've seen from him is a, a person who is good hands. He's a good route runner. He knows how to get behind the defense, but... Is that enough for him to be a number one? I just can't see it yet. I just can't see it yet. And so what I wanted next to him was a fast and big receiver. George Pickens. Go up and get it, guy. George Pickens was that person for me. Um, But, of course, I understand that he was dealing with injuries. So I can understand being a little bit of. Especially after the Larry Ogan Joby thing. I think that Paul was real, real, you know, hesitant about dealing with people with injury history. But also I wanted someone who's going to be a touchdown machine. Darnell Mooney has eight touchdowns in two years, four each year. Uh, his first year, he had 600 yards. Next year, he had 1,000. Of course, you know, 61 receptions, 81 receptions. So, it's safe to say he can be a 1,000-yard receiver. A 1,000-yard receiver doesn't make you a number one. makes you a 1,000-yard receiver. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's also like, yeah, I know he said you can't feel everything. I, I understand that, but it's year two for Justin. Yeah. And he has to – you have to figure out which, what, what, what you got in him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And the thing that should annoy me, everybody and, – and I don't understand the super GM loyalty to a GM who's done nothing for you yet. Like, that shit I don't, I don't fucking understand. And it's like, y'all the same people that if Justin has a so-so year, you gonna blame him when he's throwing people who he shouldn't be fucking throwing to. Yeah. That's the problem I have. This is, this is a big year for Justin. Nobody, I'm not talking about the wins. I don't care about the fucking wins. Don't give a shit. No. What Justin looks like. If Justin's not good, it don't matter who the hell you draft. Because in today's NFL, you gotta have one of them guys. If you ain't got one of them guys, it don't fucking matter, bro. This is not the days of having a good run game, a manageable quarterback, and a great. Them shits is over, bro. If you ain't got one of them Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, of course the GOAT, you ain't winning shit. Everybody's telling us to trust the process. Was it one of our first episodes? It was the first episode of 7,000. Who's the GM? It was fucking Ryan Pace. What happened to him? He should be in prison right now. He should be in Guant- Guantanamo. That's where he should be. We trusted the process with him. We trusted the process with Phil Emery. Dog shit. Tired of it, man. Tired of it. What have the Bears done for you in your life to make you trust anything? Nothing. If anything, you should never trust them. Yeah. Like, ever. That's not saying you should be, oh, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. No, no, you should be reasonable and say, oh, that's a good pickup. That's a good pickup. Like, when I look at Kyler Gordon, I'm not mad at the pick anymore. I said, like the players, hate the process. No, it's not even that. Kyler Gordon, that first pick was fine. The next pick after that, uh, Jaquan Briscoe, also a great player. I said, get a receiver. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have had that safety that you wanted, but you still got Eddie Jackson, man. Safety is never a pressing issue for me. I don't care. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Safety is never a pressing it's not a issue. Must for have me. Position. No. I don't care what anybody's saying. As much as the, the biggest thing you want is a safety to be able to give help over top, and a competent safety can do that. Yeah. I can find you in the fourth round like today. I don't think I needed to spend a second round pick to get you. That's just my thought. Uh, whereas a cornerback, I have backed off and I say, well, I understand. That's my thing. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm like, eh, I, I, I'm a chill. I'm a chill. Perhaps I was wrong. Maybe I'm tripping, and I'm cool with that. But Jaquan Briscoe, I think that was an opportunity for you to pick up a receiver. You to pick up a stud receiver, quick receiver. Man, George Pickens, and it's not because it was the name. It was his size and speed. They had another Bears trade. That's why I was wondering why the screen. Uh, Bears make another trade, this time to the Bengals, for number 166, for 174 and 226. He's moving too damn much. But anyway. Enough. Yeah, Enough. Enough. Just get a damn pick. Yeah. Eventually, the quality just starts to tank, man. It's, maybe he's just looking for depth. I'm, it seems the way Ryan, Ryan Poles is playing that he's looking for depth. Uh, and so now, what, he's turned that into eight picks? Yeah. Eight draft picks? Congrats, nigga. So, we can wrap this up. I thought we were going to get the pick on him. Yeah, we're not. We were vamping until we get to that. Anyway, this is 79th and Hallis. This is draft day three. This is the last episode for the draft here in Vegas. Once we're back to our respective cities, we're going to take an exhaustive look of everything, give you a normal hour, 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 hour plus episode, where we just talk about the, the draft, the total. Maybe we'll have a better grade for you. Maybe we'll have a worse grade. Yeah. As of right now, Scott, you're sitting at what, a C minus? C minus right now. I'm sitting at a C minus with them, too. We'll see. Anyway, we'd like to thank you all for the donations that got us here. We appreciate it. Uh, it was a great experience. Next time, I'm going to stay in Chicago and go to Hollis Hall. But uh, it was cool, man. It was cool to see here, man. It's just it's a blessing for you all rocking with us and getting to this uh, stage. But anyway, yeah, we appreciate you. that's Scott. I'm Flo's. We'll catch you all back in our respective cities.